In this program, I'm going to have a look at the LetPot Smart Temperature and EC Meter. I'm going to break it down into three sections. In the first section, I'm going to talk about why do we care about EC? Why should you be measuring it? And what benefit is it to you? In the second part, I'll introduce the product. And in the third part, I'll go through some suggestions to help you use the meter to grow better plants. I have a special Christmas present for you guys. If you look in the description and show notes below, there's a discount code as well as a link to Amazon to make it easier for you to order. Now this discount does expire December the 15th. So if you're interested, order this right away. So why should you care about EC? Well, I've written a blog article about this, and it goes into depth about what EC is and why it's important to you and how it affects plants. And I'll put a link to that article in the description and show notes. But in this program, I just want to simplify EC and tell you the bare bones about it. The article will go into more depth on many topics. So what is EC? Well, think about EC as a measure of the amount of fertilizer that's available to your plants. When you do hydroponics, you make up a fertilizer solution and you put it in the unit. Then as plants grow, they use that fertilizer. The level drops, and at some point there isn't enough fertilizer for the plants, so you should top it up. EC tells you how much fertilizer is in your solution. Now, if you don't measure EC, you can solve this problem a different way. If you go online to some of the chat groups about hydroponics, uh, they discuss this all the time. When should I change my solution? If the level drops, what should I add? Should I add just plain water? Should I add fertilizer solution? What should I add and when do I do it? The problem with that is that you don't know how much fertilizer you have in your solution. It's kind of like having a refrigerator with a door that doesn't open. And you can never see how much food you have available, so you don't know when to go to the grocery store. The same thing is happening here. The plants are using up that fertilizer solution, and you have no idea how much is left. Because of that, it's hard to grow good plants and to grow them efficiently. You have to know how much fertilizer is in that solution, and the EC value will tell you that. Now that you know EC is important, you want to measure it. And LetPot has come out with a nice little meter for doing that. The LetPot Smart Temperature and EC Meter is designed for hydroponic units. So what do you get when you order one of these units? Well, you get the meter that displays the numbers to you. And it communicates with Wi-Fi, so you can do this through an app. You also get a power supply to run that meter. And then you get two probes. The probes are identical. So you get two of these, so you can use one, and when it stops working, you can switch over to the other one. That's the base unit. Now, in addition to that, you can buy a version that includes a pump. Now, if your hydroponic system already has a pump, you don't need to buy the pump. But if you have an older system, or maybe a system not from LetPot that doesn't have a pump, then it's a good idea to add that, because we want that liquid to be circulating. First of all, it's better for plant growth, but it's also important to get a good EC reading. So if your unit doesn't have a pump, consider buying the pump as an added on. And that pump plugs into the meter and is run by the meter. The system is really simple to set up. Just plug the power supply into the meter, plug the probe into the meter, and pop it into one of the holes in your hydroponic system. And it comes with a basket that's very similar to the one used for growing plants. So it fits right inside the opening. One thing I really like about this meter is it has a very clear display. And you can very easily see the EC value and the temperature. And when you have the unit running, it's constantly measuring those values and displaying them to you. If you have the pump attached, it also shows you if the pump is running. The probe really has two parts. Uh, there's an inner probe that's actually doing the measurement, and then there's the little cup that's attached to it. That cup is round and designed to fit inside the hydroponic unit. Those can be taken apart if you need to for cleaning purposes. The way LetPot suggests that you use this unit is that you take the probe, put it into the unit, turn it on, and monitor continuously. And it takes a reading every few seconds and updates the display. And you just leave that in there all the time. 
If you do that, that probe has been designed to last a year. And after a year, the electrodes in it will start to corrode and it won't give you accurate readings. So you replace it with a new unit. That's a little different than other types of EC monitors. Uh, what you generally have is a handheld device that you insert in the solution, take a reading, then you wash the unit off and store it somewhere until you need the next reading. I think you could do the same with the let pot unit. And if you do that, I suspect it will last longer. There are some benefits for constant monitoring, but it's not that critical that you do that. Uh, if you take a reading once or twice a week on a growing plant, that's probably lots. And if you're just starting seed, you can probably measure it every two weeks. The fertilizer solution is not going to change a lot until the plant is growing very vigorously. So I'm not sure what the real value is of a continuous reading. So what I've described so far is the manual way to use the meter. You just go up to it, look at it, take a reading, write it down somewhere, and then you compare that value to some tables. And those tables have a list of different types of plants. So let's say you're growing lettuce. You're going to look up this table, which you'll find on the link I've given you for my blog post. And you're going to see a value for EC, a recommended EC value. And you're going to try to stay close to that. As it changes too much, you adjust the fertilizer solution. Now the other way to use this meter is a more automated system and then you have to set up the app for it. So there's an app that will run on your phone and it will give you continuous readings. The other thing that the app allows you to do is to go through that list and select the plants you're growing. So I might open the app and go, I'm growing tomatoes. And then you also specify the stage that they're at. So I've just started my tomatoes, so they're in seedling stage. And a month from now, I'll come and change that and change it to growing mode. And then a month after that, well, they're starting to flower. So I'll, I'll change it to flower mode. And the app automatically figures out what the ideal limits are for the fertilizer. If the fertilizer gets too high or too low, the app will send you a warning message. So that's kind of a nice thing to have, although then you do have to set up and use the app. So it's a little more work to get that. You can use the meter either way. It's up to you. So how does this unit compare to other EC monitors on the market? The traditional way to measure EC is with a little probe. And you simply put it in the solution and it'll have a display and it gives you the value. And then next time you want a reading, you do that again. And, and that works fairly well, but it's fairly manual. Uh, those devices don't have an app. They don't automate the limits, so it's not going to tell you what value you should have. It just simply gives you the EC value. And then you have to go to a table and figure out what you actually want to do with that value. Now, that's not particularly difficult, but it is something you have to get used to doing. The other thing you'll find is that all of the other meters on the market, they're designed to be used in any kind of solution. So the probe doesn't fit in the hydroponic unit. Now, it may be small enough to go into the hole, but it won't stay there. You, know, you just have to hold it manually. And when you're finished taking the reading, you, you put it away. That's one nice thing about the let pot unit is it just sits in there, just like your plant does, right? It sits right beside your lettuce plant and is constantly monitoring it. So those are some of the unique features of this meter. Now let's talk about how you're going to use the meter. So it's in the unit. It's either there all the time or you've just inserted it. You take a reading, and now you know what the EC value is. What do you do with that number? It's a good idea to understand what you would do manually, because that explains the process. You would identify the plant you're growing. So let's go back to our lettuce example. I'm growing lettuce. I'll look that up on a list. That table will show me the best EC value for growing lettuce. Now I'll monitor that value, and if it gets too low or too high, I have to do something. So what do I do? Well, let's say the value gets too high. That means your fertilizer concentration is going up. You're getting too much fertilizer. And if it gets too high, that becomes toxic to your plants. And if it gets too high, it will kill your plant. Now, why would that happen? Why would the fertilizer go up? Well, when you start these systems, what you do is you put in the right amount of fertilizer. 
you put in some seeds and the seeds take a while to germinate and then you have these tiny tiny little seedlings and they just don't do much for a while they're not using much fertilizer but this whole time you're losing water because of evaporation the pump is going and circulating that causes water vapor to come up any of the holes you have is losing moisture into the air so the amount of water is going down but the fertilizer stays the same. As the water goes down, the concentration goes up. And remember, EC is measuring concentration of fertilizer. And that may get too high. If it gets too high, what we want to do is add some more water to bring the value back down in the range that we want. Once the plants get nice and large, they're using large amounts of fertilizer. Now we have a situation where the fertilizer level may get too low. Plants don't grow well if they don't have enough fertilizer. So we want to increase the amount of fertilizer. And to do that, you want to add some more fertilizer to the reservoir. The best way to do that is to make up your fertilizer solution and make it a little more concentrated than you normally do and start adding it. Now, in either case, if it's too low or too high, how much do you add? And you really don't know that. There's no easy way for you to calculate that. So what I recommend you do is you add a little bit, take another reading. Add a little bit, take another reading. Until you get to the range that you want. Now you can do a bunch of calculations, but you have to know the volume of water in your reservoir, the size of the reservoir, etc. It's complicated. So the best thing to do is add a little bit and measure. Add a little bit and measure. Once you got it in the right range, leave it again. Measure it again in a few days or a couple of weeks. Now, the other thing that's important to do is to maintain this probe. And one of the first things you have to do is calibrate it. And the way the let pot system works is that there's a little button on the meter you press and it auto calibrates. To do that, what you do is you take your probe and you put it in distilled water. So we want water with no fertilizer. That's a zero amount of fertilizer. You press the button and the meter zeroes itself. Now I found that calibration a bit odd because the traditional way to calibrate EC is to get a solution that's somewhere around the value you're measuring. So if I'm aiming for an EC of say 1500, I'll go out and get myself a standard EC solution somewhere around 1500. Doesn't that be exact, but somewhere in that ballpark. And I'll measure that and calibrate with that. That is not how let pot does it. They calibrate at the zero value. It's better to calibrate with a standard solution at a higher value. But I don't know how important that is. It's certainly better for being more accurate, but I don't know how accurate we actually have to be. As gardeners, we're not trying to get a specific value. It's not critical like pH. We, we work in large numbers here. So for instance, a plant might grow quite well anywhere between 500 and 2000, with 1500 being the sweet spot. As long as we're in that ballpark, we're okay. So I think the calibration is not that important for hydroponics. Now the other thing you generally do with EC meters is that you clean the probes. So the way they work is they have two metal probes and they pass electricity on one probe and measure it on the second probe. They're, they're measuring how well electricity travels through the solution. So you have to keep those probes clean. Now LetPod has a special design for a probe with several layers of metal on it and their claim is that this probe is good for a year and doesn't need to be cleaned. The traditional way of using EC meters is that every time you're finished taking measurements, you clean the probe. So you would wash it in certainly clean water. You may actually use some soap and clean the tips and then put it in distilled water and then put it away. Now you don't have to go through those steps with the let pot unit. You just leave it in the solution. So that's going to save you a bit of time. The downside to that is that after a year, you have to replace the probe. Whereas with other EC meters, the probe lasts longer because you're keeping it clean and you're not using it all of the time. All right, that gives you a pretty good introduction to the unit, tells you about the unit and tells you about what EC is. But there is more to learn. You know, there are different units for EC. Uh, you want to know the difference. Uh, what's the difference between EC and TDS, total dissolved solids? What is nutrient lockout? 
you might read about that if you're reading about hydroponics. These other topics are all discussed in my blog post, and there's a link to that in the description and show notes below. What is my overall impression of this unit? Well, I think it's been fairly well designed. As far as I know, it's the only unit on the market that has a probe that actually sits in a desktop hydroponic unit. Uh, that's a benefit. Uh, the little meter is really nice. The display is very clear, very easy to read compared to what you generally get, which is a very gray scale with some darker gray letters on it. Kind of hard to read. The whole system is really easy to use. It took me a few seconds to set it up. Now, that was without the app. If you do use the app, it takes a bit longer for setup, but literally you just take it out of the box, plug it together, put the probe in your unit, it, it's working. The other thing I haven't mentioned is that it measures temperature. Now, I don't know how important that is. You know, if the temperature's not perfect for growing lettuce, are you going to change the temperature in your whole house to accommodate that? I think temperature is not that valuable. But what I'd really like to see on the unit is a measure of pH. It is important to monitor the pH of the solution as well. If you try to go out and buy a different product that measures pH and EC, uh, those units are quite expensive. They do exist, but they're expensive. Now you can buy less expensive units where each one is done in a different probe, so you have to buy two probes. In the future, it would be nice if Letpot had a unit that did EC and pH, but I'm sure that would cost more, so I don't know if it's worth it. EC is the more important thing to measure. Overall, the unit works quite well. Uh, it's a nice little device, and the important message I want to leave with you is that it's critical you measure EC. You'll grow better plants, they'll grow faster, and you'll waste less fertilizer if you measure EC. So think about adding that to your hydroponics system. Now, if you'd like to learn more about hydroponics, I have a collection of videos right here. And if you're interested in getting a new hydroponics system, check out the Let Pop Max. And I have a video describing that product here. Happy hydroponics.